So most of us sight our air 15s in at 100 yards, and what I want to do is look at what is the optimal distance for sighting in your rifle. Um, a lot of us have seen trajectory charts before, but I think what I'm going to do is a little bit different. So, um, you have your sight line for your rifle on this top line, and on the AR-15 that's about 2.6 inches of, above your bore if your rifle's down here. So for you, if you're sighting at 100 yards, for you to hit your target out here at 100 yards, your bore line is actually going up relative to your sight line. And so what we want to do is look at what happens to the bullet once it goes through there. Does it keep going up? How long does it keep going up? Where does it come back down? Or does it peak right there and then immediately start coming back down? Um, so uh, the first thing we have to do is make some assumptions. Um, for ease of calculation, we're going to neglect uh, air effects. So we're going to neglect drag. We're going to neglect if the bullet changes from supersonic to subsonic, which the 223 shouldn't do um, in the first 100 yards. But um, these assumptions are important because it's going to allow us to assume that the bullet has a constant horizontal velocity, uh, which is going to simplify the calculations greatly. And we're also going to make a small angle approximation. So sine of theta is theta, and cosine of theta is 1. And this is also going to uh, make these calculations a lot easier. So I already wrote them out just to make going through easy. So on AR-15, the height of your sight above your bore line is 2.6 inches. And since we're working in English, we're going to go ahead and convert that to feet. Um, the muzzle velocity of, I think I chose, um, Federal American Eagle 223, 55 grain, um, is something like 3,240 feet per second. And then the acceleration due to gravity is just standard value, 32.174 feet per second. So what we're going to do is take this equation that you'll learn or see in you know, basic high school physics class, simple projectile motion. And this is um, your y distance uh, with respect to t is uh, your initial velocity in the y direction times t plus one half at squared. Uh, but we want this in terms of x because we're looking for the bullet trajectory as it moves along in a distance in the x direction. So, um, since we were able to make the assumption that we have constant horizontal velocity, x equals v times t, and you can rearrange this to get t equals x over v. Um, and this is good because then we can sub this equation in for t in this equation and get y in terms of x. So now we just need to solve this for the initial velocity in the y direction because some very small part of that bullet's initial velocity is actually going up. Um, and since we, we know that the sight line is 0.21325 feet above the bore and we want the bullet to go through this height, we want the bullet to be this high above its initial point, 300 feet out, which is 100 yards, we can solve this equation for the initial velocity, which is 3.79 Two six three seven feet per second. And this allows us to write out this equation, y of x with respect to x, and we can plot this, which I did in Excel. Um, and then the next thing to look at is what what is the actual optimal sighting distance? So I'm going to bring in the Excel graphs uh, in a second, but just to go ahead and ruin the surprise, when you plot this, it can the bullet continues rising after it crosses the um, the sight line at 100 yards. So, if we assume that the optimal distance, the optimal sighting distance, um, is where the bullet's going to peak, um, i.e., it's not going to go above the sight line; it will the highest point is at the sight line then we know that the y velocity is zero at this point because at that point it's transitioning from going up to coming back down. So we get the uh, w uh, velocity in the y direction equals the initial velocity minus at and we can go ahead and set that equal to zero and then we have the same equation as before. Um, 
now we have two equations and two unknowns. We don't know t and we don't know the initial v, uh, velocity in the y direction, but we don't care about t. So we'll solve these equations and um, get the initial velocity in the y direction, which ends up being 3.70435, which is, if you'll notice, it's only like 0 0.09 feet per second smaller. Uh, than the than the first one we calculated, but since the bolt's going so fast and the height above the bore is so small, this is actually significant. But anyway, now we can plug it back into the y of x equation right here, and um, we can plot this. Looking at the graph, the red line is the bullet trajectory for an AR-15 sighted at 100 yards. Now it crosses the sight line at 100 yards and then continues to rise and doesn't come back down across sight line until about 460 or 470 feet. The green line is the trajectory of a bullet that peaks at the sight line and um, it touches the sight line at about 124.4 yards. The blue line is obviously the sight line. And then another question which is kind of interesting which I did the calculations for but won't show you because it's pretty much the same as the first set of calculations um, but instead of using x equals 300 feet, we use x equals 150 feet, which is equivalent to 50 yards. This graph has a, a additional trajectory line. The purple line is for an AR sighted at 50 yards. This is something you might do if you have a red dot on your, on your rifle or something with uh, no magnification. You're setting up your rifle for a CQB type application, but... Um, as you can see, it crosses at 50 yards and then continues to rise a lot. Uh, at its peak, it's almost probably uh, about two and a half inches above the sight line. And this is okay as long as you're conscious of this trajectory and you figure out your holdovers and understand that as you're shooting at targets above 50 feet, you actually are going to want to hold under your target instead of over your target. Um, but as long as you're conscious of this, it shouldn't be a problem. So this leads me to what is the best distance to sight in your rifle. And I think it is 100 yards. Um, the difference between the trajectory for 100 yard and 125 yards is very minimal. Both are flat and 100 yards is standard. So if your rifle sighted at 100 yards and you give it to someone else, they are going to know what to do and be able to use it efficiently and effectively right off the bat. Additionally, if you have to shoot at something closer, um, the most you'll ever have to hold over would be 2.6 inches, and that's if it was right at your muzzle, at which point you're probably not going to be aiming anyway. So if you're shooting at something at 50 yards, you know you just have to hold over by about an inch or so, or just put it right on target and accept that your shot's going to be an inch lower than that. Whereas if you sighted your rifle at 50 yards and now you're shooting out at say 150 yards, you have to hold under, um, which to me just seems counterintuitive. So that's why I would personally continue to sight my rifle at 100 yards.